We will see how it works at the pedal side. The master cylinder is the main part here. It transfers the force on the pedal to the calipers. There is a push rod, outlet port, and a fluid reservoir tank. Let's see what's inside the master cylinder. There are inlet ports for the fluid to reach the cylinder, compensating ports, primary piston, secondary piston, retaining springs, and piston seals. Now, let's see how the master cylinder works. When you press the brake, the push rod pushes the primary piston closing the first compensating port. This creates pressure in the cylinder, which pushes the secondary piston, and furtherly closing the second compensating port. Hence both pistons, will push the fluid to their corresponding calipers. In case if the secondary piston fails to build up pressure, the primary piston can still develop pressure, with increased travel. And if the primary piston fails, the secondary piston will not receive any pressure to move. So the push rod at the end of the first piston, can push secondary piston, which requires much force to be applied on the brake pedal. Even for a fully functional master cylinder, pushing the pistons through the brake pedal requires much force. So later on, another component named boosters were introduced. The brake booster comes between the pedal and the master cylinder, and utilizes the vacuum from the engine, assisting the brake pedal and makes it easier to apply brakes. Let's take a look inside the servo. It consists of, a valve rod, dust boot, air filter, valve spring, diaphragm, diaphragm spring, vacuum check valve, hydraulic push rod. When you push the pedal, the valve rod opens the inlet valve, allowing air into the diaphragm front chamber through the filter. This air, along with the vacuum created by the engine in the diaphragm rear chamber, pulls the diaphragm, and furtherly pushing the push rod towards the master cylinder thus provides assistance, and reduce the effort in braking.